Becker, General Manager of Deeds. AB 1482 is a very complex new law affecting all of California, but it can be broken out into five major subject matters. Today, we're going to discuss age-restricted exemptions and certain other more obscure exemptions that might apply. Before we go too far, I do want to express that we're early into this process, so best practices, policies, processes may not actually be solidified. This is the best information that I have at this point. Secondly, every situation is unique. If you need legal assistance, please do contact your attorney. As an overview, AB 1482 is a rent control law. Um, it limits the amount of rent increases to no more than 5% plus CPI. And if CPI exceeds 5% itself, there's a hard cap on how much you can increase rents to no more than 10% annually. In some instances, um, those properties that are under AB 1482 that are under this rent control ordinance, there are a limited number of reasons where you can request or require a tenant to vacate the premises. And in some of those instances, you may be required to provide to the tenant relocation costs. Talking about the exemptions, there are a list of exemptions within this law. One of them is um, separately alienable single-family homes and condominiums. We speak about that in a different segment, so if you're interested and that applies to you, please check out that video. In addition, dorms, colleges, universities, boarding schools, there's not rent control for those. Hospitals, elder care facilities, religious facilities. Hotels. Deed restricted very low or low income uh, communities. These are the communities that basically are uh, regulated and administrated by uh, housing programs and you must meet a certain income cap even to move it in. For them, this does not apply. Housing that is already subject to a more restrictive form of rent control. And yes, throughout California, there are different rent control ordinances already in place if yours is more restrictive, this doesn't soften it. Duplexes. In some instances, duplexes may be exempt, but they are only in those instances when the owner resides in one of the two residences and they maintain it as their primary residence. Owner-occupied single-family residences with no more than two ADUs, uh, tiny homes, are a thing. Um, it is the year, you know, here we are coming into 2020 and building tiny homes in your backyard on your property is becoming much more prevalent. If you have one, if you have two tiny homes, this would not apply to you. If you have three, it would. Likewise, if you are in a share rental situation and you are the owner and you live on the premises and you rent out one or two private spaces, a bedroom or a combination bedroom, bathroom, but you have shared kitchen living facilities, this would not apply to you. You have, again, more than two, rent control, just cause would apply to you. Now, the big one that would apply to many of my clients and many small investors is housing that has been issued a certificate of occupancy within the previous 15 years. Now, as a recap, Costa Hawkins um, is the law and has been the law since 1995. Costa Hawkins prevents the uh, institution of rent control on single family residences and condos, but it also prohibits the institution of rent control on properties built after 1995. For example, um, so if you've got a property that was built in 1996, no matter how big it is, it doesn't fall under Costa Hawkins. Now do realize if San Francisco you know, has their own ordinance that says this applies to all properties after 1979, that still is in effect even under Costa Hawkins. AB 1482 changes that because it states housing that has been issued a certificate of occupancy within the prior 15 years. 
unlike Costa Hawkins, AB 1482 does not set a definite date after which you're exempt. Costa Hawkins, December 31st of 1995, everything after that was exempt. Instead, every single property is specific to a date. So the question is, how old is your property? This unit, for example, is a duplex. It's in Coffee Park, which is coming back. We rented both sides of this unit, both sides of this property, in the summer of 2019. It got a certificate of occupancy in July of 2019, which basically means that it is, it is exempt 15 years through July of 2034. 14th Street, a larger apartment complex, got a certificate of occupancy in August of 2017, a couple of years prior, meaning that it's exempt through August of 2032. Older and older properties, and adult apartments, and this is a complex with hundreds of units, all other things being equal, this property was built in April 2014. Um, I said 2014. Um, it was built in April 2014. Therefore, all other things being equal, it would be exempt through April of 2029. And we have many single family units with in-law units. A Northwest Santa Rosa property that is not owner occupied, built in November of 2007, and it is exempt through November of 2023, only a few years from now. One of my managed properties in Southwest Santa Rosa. Again, the owner does not occupy the property. Property you had a certificate of occupancy in May of the year 2004, meaning that that 15 year exemption expired in May of 2019, meaning this property isn't exempt. Unlike those properties that are classified as either exempt or statutorily right now non-exempt, those properties that are age exempt do not have verbiage that must be put into their contracts right now. However, best practice, as that age exemption is coming close to expiration, it's, it's, it's imminent, it's recommended that you put verbiage into your contracts as you get close, similar to this. And it's an example, but it's written in to say, effective as of a certain date, 2023, the following applies. This documentation, these verbs, this verbiage must be written this specific way using this verbiage, and it must be in 12 point font. AB 1482, as it is written, is specified that it is supposed to be repealed as of January 1st of the year 2030. Therefore, theoretically, my duplex in Coffee Park could conceivably never be under rent control because rent control, AB 1482, will expire before the 15 years comes up. That is, of course, as long as AB 1482 is allowed to sunset, and I have my doubts. The provisions of AB 1482, including the sunset clause, including rent caps, including exemptions, is specific only to AB 1482. Theoretically, if Costa Hawkins were to expire, if a local city were to institute more strenuous rent control, um, excuse me, more strenuous rent if just cause eviction components, it could actually undermine even the exemptions of AB 1482. Accordingly, it is important that you stay informed and when the opportunity arises, vote. Please, it's, it's complicated and only gonna get more so. If you have questions, contact a property management professional, contact your real estate agent. They will be able to help you. And lastly, as I said before, I'm not an attorney. If you have legal questions, please contact an attorney. I'm Keith Becker from Didi's.